Hey guys, and welcome to another Flambient real estate photography tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at editing a, what can be a pretty complex situation. You're going to be needing to do multiple flash pops. If you see here the image on the left, we have sun coming in behind me here, lighting up uh, just this area, but then this hallway in this back, the front foyer is really dark. There's two rooms off to the right, which are dark too. I mean, so if we were trying to brighten these up, we would obviously be um, overexposing this kitchen area by you know like three or four stops and it just wouldn't work HDR wouldn't really work in this situation because it's just too much of contrast to try to bring these rooms in to uh, correct exposure so if you look at the image on the right this is how I was able to get it to look and if you can look real quick we are also going to fix this distortion so right off the bat I'm just gonna let you know that we are shooting on micro four thirds so if you have been following me for a while you know that I love the micro four thirds system I have videos out there explaining why I believe that micro four thirds is amazing for real estate photography uh, and I'm on that Leowa 7.5 millimeter full frame people that's 15 millimeters so that is a fixed focal length the aperture goes down to f2 which can be really good for video work by the way if you're shooting on micro four thirds so take that in consideration so let's get going here let's start out with my very first image and none of these have been edited yet this is straight out of camera I'm going to show you exactly what I do to get the preset and how I work with every image so first off I am going to just use my Leowa first bump and I'm going to show you down here if you are using this Leowa lens it is under Venus optics and what we can do right now is notice the bowing right here so a lot of times you might not notice it like in this doorway but you can kind of tell that it has some barrel distortion so we're going to take this distortion slider slide it all the way over to the right and I noticed that that didn't do it let's go this way so really what we need to do is just kind of play around with that and you can use your lead lines here to try to help that out and that actually looks like it fixed it to a certain degree you can see still that it is just still bowing right there um, to be honest with you I don't really know if there's a easy fix for that you know what I you know I mean you just have to get it as close as possible but let's see let's check remove chromatic aberration too so we're gonna go all the way back to the top a lot of you have been commenting on what are my presets and I really for the initial first bump I used to leave it in it again you can put it on standard or you can do color I believe standard is a lot is a little bit less saturation and um, just out of the gate it is less contrast so maybe you would prefer that and what I like to do is I like to leave my highlight and shadow sliders at zero because every situation is going to be different you're going to want to tweak every situation so it's real easy right now just to do your initial bump one time I like to maybe drop the highlights bump the shadows and this is literally going off situational uh, whatever looks the best for each image per se and I'll show you how to create a preset for every image or for every listing so it's quicker the initial one here we're gonna have to tweak but then we'll just copy and paste every other one so we can see that we have a lot of hot spot going here we might have to bring those highlights down and that's it pretty much for this I don't touch anything else so just make sure you get your lens corrections set up and again the only reason is because we have this um, door weight right at the edge we might be able to crop this in a little bit to hide that and that's what we might do sometimes you're just gonna have to tweak that but um, I'm looking right here now to see if I can get that to be a little bit straighter so it's not so obvious you know sometimes zero is the best way but you know if we're going back this way yeah that tends to make it a little worse so I say somewhere along there and let's just leave it at 130 and then we're just gonna come up here and go copy make sure all these are checked uh, we'll just make sure everything's checked healing and masking doesn't matter curve we're not messing with that anyway so almost all these are checked by default anyway and then just hit copy 
So I put a little star down here. How I did that was just hitting one on my keyboard because if you go two or three or four or five, it puts different stars on there. I just use one and that way I know that this is an image that I want because if we go to the next image, I did my initial flash pop above the camera just a bare flash bouncing it off the ceiling and then I decided I wanted to go brighter so that's why I like to mark these because I don't I don't need this image I'm gonna bring this one in so we're gonna paste our settings and that brighten it up a little bit notice my histogram it could be pushed a little bit so we're gonna bring that exposure up just like that we already flagged at one let's move to this one now this is what I did I kept my exposure the same as this image and I moved into this room and this was a big dining room area over here. I went over to this wall and popped the flash. And this was, I think I'm using my uh, Godox V1. So this is your standard flash, the one with the round head on it. And I just used, um, I think I was at like one eighth or a quarter power. And if you're not sure, do a flash pop at one eighth and then just switch it to quarter power and do another flash pop. It ain't gonna hurt you. It's gonna take you less than three seconds to do that. That way when you get back into the po into post here, you can, um, yeah, see, that's the other room. Then you'll be able to decide which one is going to work. And I always check the back of my camera real quick before I pick the tripod up and move it anyway. But let's paste these settings in. And what I want to do for this one is bring my highlights back almost to neutral because I'm just focusing on this room, how it looks. And I flagged it as one. Now I went over to this one. I went into this back corner here behind this wall. This is another big room here. And I did my flash pop. And I believe, yeah. And again, highlights for this particular one, we want them back up because we want the brightness of that image. And maybe we could even bring this exposure up a little bit, right like that, flag it as one, move over here. Now I lit this back wall here with the flash, paste our settings in, and again, bring that those highlights back up because we want nice and bright back there. And again, I tried different flash pops. I think it was too hot at that ceiling. And I tried over here just in case I needed to blend myself out, which I don't. It didn't matter. And then what I did was I just cranked the exposure up and I did a flash pop above the camera just to light this area in here. This is kind of like what I'm going to use to light the foyer. And I'm going to just bring that up and notice we have a shadow here, which we'll be able to fix later on. I will show you, flagged it as one. So now I'm just going to hold down command and click on each one of these one stars, right like that, right click, and we're bringing them into Photoshop as layers. All right, so once all your layers have been loaded into Photoshop, and it might take a few, you know, a couple seconds because there's so many layers depending on the speed of your computer, but the first thing that you are going to want to do, especially with this many layers, and if you were running back and forth from your camera, checking your flash powers and all that, which I did, uh, it just takes a few extra seconds to check your work on site before you move. You want to make sure you get enough images to work with where you know you're going to be able to light the scene. So that's critical on site. So just uh, make sure the top layer is selected and come down here and hold down shift and select them all. Come up here to edit, auto align layers and auto works perfect. And we're just going to click OK. So if there's any out of alignment, it's going to correct that for you. Because the last thing you want to do is get halfway through your edit and notice that everything is shifted and then if one layer is out of alignment it's going to cause blurriness and it's just going to look like <laughs> garbage pretty much so what do we do well right now we need to get those flash layers blended together to give us a nice base layer to bring that ambient layer back in so we can just toggle off the ambient layer now this is the flash layer above the camera we have that room that room there that room and then that so what i want to do is just start bringing up these layers one at a time and i'll tell you why so we're going to turn this to lighten mode and now if we toggle this on and off we want to watch to see if it's affecting any of the any part of the image besides just this room and it is not that is good so we're going to leave that on now it's this image that we just fixed so we have to come down here to drag this one up and it is this one let's turn this to lighten mode and what that does is just reveals that room so 
this is personal preference. I feel like maybe I could blend that out a little bit, um, even that floor out of there, because if we toggle that on and off, you can see that it's spilling into this room. So what I want to do is just create a layer mask and make sure black is selected just to be able to paint flow. I'm actually going to put my flow at like 5% and then just slightly blend that out of there just that, so that floor is more even like that. And we toggle that on and off. And maybe right here, you can see where that was coming through on the floor. Keep fixing that until that's pretty much gone. <coughs> I like that. Oh, you know what else? I can see it hitting up here on this doorway here. So we're just going to blend that out. Just so it's not so obvious. There we go. Now we can come down here to the hallway, bring that up just underneath that ambient layer. Let's try lighten mode on this. Toggle that on and off. That looks good to me. And honestly, what we can do now, should I bring that up? Well, let's not. Let's not bring up our, our overexposed area for the hallway yet. Actually, you know what, let's do that. We're gonna have to run this a little bit differently than lighten mode because if we do lighten mode on this, it's just gonna overexpose everything. So we're gonna leave it as normal and we're going to just do a layer mask, command I to invert it, and make sure white is selected. Let's use our right bracket on our keyboard, make that a little bit bigger, and just start brushing in this. And don't worry about that shadow right there. We're gonna be able to fix that with our, our real, our true ambient layer. And again, anything overexposed, we'll be able to tweak and bring that down. So I'm just painting in this hallway to make sure it's nice and bright. I mean, this is one way to do it. I maybe could have done a flash pop tucked in and bounced it off that ceiling and then over here on this ceiling that could have worked too. Sometimes I like to use the ambient if it's not introducing tons of color cast. Let's see if we can switch it back to black and get this back wall bright again. And now we can turn on our ambient layer, which, eh, not a real fan of it. We can try playing with the opacity bringing that down to next to nothing. Notice that we really didn't need the ambient. It's not really helping us in any way, <laughs> to be honest with you. So again, sometimes that is an issue. So I'm just gonna introduce a little bit more ambient light just so it looks a little bit more natural. And that is about it. I really think we are done with this. So again, you want to make sure you can light it as evenly as possible, whether or not it, that is with the ambient layer and then just using a flash pop for your windows. In this case, we didn't have a whole lot of windows except for behind us and it was making a really tough contrasty situation, but now we've really toned down that sun hitting the wall so it's a lot more even. And we're showing the open floor plan of the house. Remember, real estate photography is all about showing the space showing where rooms are connected to what. And I thought this was a good example of that, showing here's the stairwell, here's the entrance way, here's a room here, here's another room here. So think about that when you're walking through the house. You know, people are looking at these images online, wanting to see the floor plan, and that is gonna increase the potential for them to get, you know, schedule a showing. And that is really what our job is, is trying to help sell the house. So just keep that in mind when you're shooting a, a house for a realtor is that you're not, you're not there just to do like your own ideas. You want to just, how would, how would a potential buyer want to see this house? Um, let's go ahead and flatten this image and bring it back into Lightroom. Command S to save it, brings it right back into Lightroom. Now I'm going to show you what I do into your final bump and look what that does. Now again, everything has to be tweaked a little bit. I want to bring the, the brightest point just right of center here so we have this is where you want your exposure. And just so you know, you can grab the middle of your histogram up here and pull that and drag that back and forth. So I wanna show you one more thing where I actually used a shoot through umbrella on this listing and it helped me a lot and I'll show you why. So this is flash pop above the camera and then this is the umbrella. And I'm gonna show you a really fast technique. So let's go back. I believe this is the ambient layer. And again, this sun was the sun coming through. So this line has nothing to do with anything that I did. This is just the way it looks. I already did my, my preset bump on this one. And then this is my flash pop. 
So we're just gonna bring these two images into Photoshop. All right, so what you can do once both images have been loaded into Photoshop is take your ambient layer, drop it to luminosity. And that took a lot of that color cast away. And so another thing that you can do if your flash layer looks fairly even is try the 50-50 blend. Take your ambient layer and just drop it down to 50% and see what that does for you. A lot of times that is going to work. It's gonna introduce some of that, and you know, a lot of times you're gonna to have to play with that. You know, maybe 65, bringing in more ambient light. In this case, that does seem to help a little bit more in the 60s. And then if you want to pull that flash layer back in for your windows, just create a layer mask, leave it white, and then just paint those windows back in using black and that'll just reveal the flash layer underneath. And that's it. I'm just gonna flag, you know, uh, flatten this image, bring it back into Lightroom, and doing my interior final bump, tweaking that exposure so it's not too bright. By following this method here, your images are gonna be consistently the same exposure. It's gonna look really good. And that is it. Look at how fairly, look at how clean that is, you know? because you want natural shadows. Don't be afraid of shadows. As long as the image is properly exposed evenly, and it is, you know, it's gonna look better than just a washed out flat image with no shadows and no detail or whatever. So there you go, guys. Leave me a comment if you have any questions about this. I answer every single comment. Um, I, I strive to help out as many people as I possibly can. And uh, again, hit that subscribe button. Tutorials are coming out all the time, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.